Okay. So, hi everybody. So, as you know, this is kind of an improvised talk. We we had um, a last minute uh, reflection. So, uh, so I didn't really want to do like a very serious talk. This is more like a, think of it as a, like you know these breakout rooms in Zoom, say something like this. I just want to talk to you about an aspect I found in my research in the last years that I find amusing. And I don't know, maybe you will tell me what you think about it. What happened is that many times when I was stuck in my research, the quick reforcing came in and solved all my problems. And this happened in very different areas. So I'm wondering what is happening here. Okay, so the main one first. So I, I'm thinking about uh, five sections. Let's let's see what I'm going to do. Maybe one section is going to be really small. The first two introductory, and then I'm going to show you three different examples that are completely different that are even not uh, not connected between each other. So you can sleep in one and be alert in the two, whatever you want. Um, but they all uh, go, they all go around the generalized descriptive set theory. Okay. So what is generalized descriptive set theory? Uh, well, I think many of you already know, right? So so the point is that so classical descriptive set theory. We can think of it as the study of um, definable subsets of well, at the beginning, one think of the counter set, the bare space, but in general, the polished space is right. So usually now, well, in all literature now, um, generally descriptive set theory, it's kind of similar. It's just that instead of omega, you just put kappa everywhere and you have generalized descriptive set theory. And in all literature right now, um, kappa is regular. Actually, most of the time, kappa to less than kappa is equal to kappa. Okay, so when you hear, uh, mostly when you hear general descriptive set theory, it's, it's this. So it's the study of the space 2 to the kappa and the space uh, kappa to the kappa and, and the it. Okay, but the point is that if you if you look at the results, so the nice thing about descriptive set theory is that if the subsets are definable, they're kind of regular. They don't uh, they don't have many pathologies. Like this is this was the initial drive uh, behind the script set theory. But what happens? Let me um, is that if you work for on generalized script set theory, things are not so nice. So I prepared here it is. Oh, I can do this. So, for example, uh, this list could, could be really long. I just took uh, the things we are going to talk about maybe later. So, for example, um, in, in omega to the omega, well, in, in the classic uh, Polish space setting, uh, Borel sets are delta 1, 1. And we have many equivalent defi definitions of analytic sets. We have the perfect property for analytic sets. And we have that the space is completely metrizable. But uh, if kappa is regular, then in kappa to the kappa, we, we don't have that or else sets are the same as delta 1, 1. Actually, all the equivalent definitions are uh, independent between each other. We can have even that uh, kappa closed sets do not have the perfect set property, and these spaces are not completely metrizable. So it, it's very different. And uh, for this reason, uh, we and Luca uh, tried to develop actually something that is similar. And, the, and if, if kappa is not regular, it's similar to finite omega, we have many similarities. So, well, I, I guess the main definition is the definition of um, lambda polyspace. I mean, this, this, can, this is a general definition. Here we do not need lambda. So lambda is a it's a, a topological space that is completely metrizable, and uh, its weight is 
I don't know, the symbol for weight is uh, um, lambda. Okay, so it's a generalization of polyspace. Polyspace, its weight is omega, lambda polyspace, its weight is lambda. Okay, and now if we have cofinality of lambda equals to omega, uh -huh, then you see we, we recover a lot of things. For example, Borel, lambda Borel sets are lambda delta 1 1. All the definitions that were independent now are again equivalent. We have a perfect set property for analytic sets. We have complete metraceability. And so if we use lambda to do omega instead of omega to do omega, we have everything. So, you know, we've seen this, this new setting with a lot of uh, uh, similar things, a lot of nice things. So I, I would say that, you know, what, what is the aesthetic of our work? Aesthetic. Is it, is it written? I don't know how to write the statics. No, the H is here. L let's not find the statics. <laughs> Sorry. The static, we, we cut this, right? The static uh, is, um, okay. is similarity. So for uh, general, for the regular case, for the regular case, we, we cannot delete with, with the pen and paper. With the regular case, the, um, the the aesthetics is uh, we have uh, like a playground with a lot of universes, a lot of, of stuff that can happen. We, we can have this or we can have that or etc. But uh, I think in this um, in this area, the aesthetic is similarity. So when we have something similar to the classical case, then we say, okay, this is a nice thing that is going to happen. Okay, so let's do let's see some examples of lambda polyspaces. Again, here, uh, lambda is going, this is why I'm using lambda instead of kappa. When I say kappa, usually it's regular. When I say lambda, usually it's singular. Okay, well, one is uh, uh, lambda to the omega. And so this is kind of like um, the lambda, the lambda bear space. So the, the, I don't know, preferential original lambda polyspace. Okay, we, we yes, but we, which a topology, the product topology on the uh, of discrete copies of lambda. So how to write it? So if we have S in um, lambda to less than omega, then the open sets are. Exacto, uh, finito. Sorry. Never. Ah, okay. Uh, no, no, I, I lost my. Okay. So we fix some coordinates, a finite amount of coordinates, and, there, and, there, and we change the rest. So these are the basic open sets of the topology. Okay, then we, we, we can have a different thing. So let's fix, so this is lambda polish, another one. Let's fix um, a sequence of, a cofinal sequence in lambda of cardinals. Well, okay, it can be ordinal. Let's say cardinals. Okay, and then we consider this space. So the product, again with the um, uh, with the product topology. So uh, this is annoying to write. Let, let me write this like this. Okay, I, it's the same. Okay, so this is more like a PCF uh, stuff, but still, this is uh, this is uh, also lambda pop to a lambda topology. Actually, you can prove that these two spaces are the same; they are actually homeomorphic. Oh, I don't know how to call this. Well, let's, let's put it. so you see the space. So this means that the space uh, uh, doesn't um, rely on the sequence. So even if we take a different sequence, we are, all, we are always the same space because they're all homomorphic to lambda to omega. We, or we, uh, Stone called it C lambda. So when you see C lambda, I mean in this for whatever um, final sequence. Okay, then 
how do you see uh, do, do, do. okay you see the classical way to approach this in a generalized way is a two to the kappa so let's see two to the omega two to the lambda okay so is this a lambda polyspace well um well first we have to fix the topology and this is what you expect this is called the bounded topology okay so we fix some so not finite but less than lambda many boundedly less than lambda many coordinates and we, we let the rest roam free okay they, they all seem the same this these topologies well if so what do we need here if uh, um, two to the less than lambda is equal to lambda then it's a lambda polyspace so so these two spaces were introduced by stone at a certain point in the 60s but nobody cared and this is kind of we're trying to do the same thing they did for general you know, descriptive set theory regular we do let's do the same then a, a, a different now a different space um, this was uh, introduced by Woodin. space v lambda plus one. Oh, okay this yeah, is just a set the, to move the, the you have to move i paper. have to move here it is thank you thank you Okay. Okay, V lambda plus one. So this is a, a set. So where is the the topology? Well, we need to define the right topology. So let's fix uh, no. Let's fix alpha less than lambda and a a, a, a subset of V alpha, and then the uh, I don't know how to call it and a alpha the basic open sets. So our the x in v lambda plus one. So v lambda plus one is just the set of it's the same, you know, writing uh, set of subsets of v lambda such that x intersect v alpha is equal to a. So it's the same. Uh, so uh, the open sets are the same up until alpha, and then above they can be anything. So if actually v lambda uh, is cardinality lambda then this is a, a lambda polish space so this is kind of a little bit stronger than what we've seen before uh, for example uh, v lambda this is true if v lambda is closed under the best function uh, yes lambda is closed under the best function for example if lambda is uh, is a limit of inaccessible cardinals so this is a little bit stronger, but you, we will see. Right? We lambda plus one is used in, in contexts where we have a lot of larger cardinals, so we don't care about inaccessible cardinals. Okay, actually, the you know, proposition is that all these four examples are the same. They are all. I mean, if when there are polyspaces, so if we have these conditions, then they're all the same. And well, if we don't have, they're not lambda polyspaces, so we don't care. Okay, so this is, so this is the lambda bare space. Good to know. Now I want to well let, let's I have a, um um a point class of reference just to, for example, the analytics. So we say A is a lambda analytic. Now we have, I mean, you can decide your, your uh, definition as usual. Uh, they, they're all the same. So if it is empty or the continuous image the uh, lambda polyspace okay so this was just to, to give you an idea these are the kind of spaces we are working on 
And uh, today I'm interested mostly about uh, the regular regularity properties. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use a new page for regularity properties. Okay, well, regularity properties. Maybe I can. Okay, so the well, let me let me remind you what are the usual regularity properties. So, for example, the perfect property means uh, so A has perfect property if and only if A is countable or um, there exists it contains a homeomorphic copy of the counter space. Okay, this is the perfect property. And we have that uh, uh, lambda, anal uh, lambda analytics. Sorry, counter space you said, but you wrote lambda. Oh, lambda. I wrote <laughs> the very space, yes. I'm too much used to. Uh, also, lambda is very, very similar to, to. Okay, so analytics have the perfect property. So well, what about our case? Uh, well, uh, as I said, Stone proved that, uh, uh, well, I have, I have to say what is a uh, um, lambda perfect set property. So we, we can just copy, right? So if and only if A has cardinality less or equal than lambda, or it contains, uh, yeah, so we, mm. now what I'm going to say, copy, well, let, let's just say of two to the lambda. I mean, it's the same if lambda is two to the less than lambda is equal to lambda. And then if it's not, then we have actually two different, we can like here put two in lambda or lambda to the omega, but I mean, in the future, I'm always going to take for granted the lambda is enough closed so that everything is homeomorphic. Okay, and then Stone proved that all lambda analytic sets F the lambda is P. So this is a nice regularity property. Now, I'm not going to talk about the back measurability because I don't want to. The bare property. So cl classically, hmm, I see what it is classically. So classically, we say that A is nowhere dense. Dense. If and only if um, its closure as MP, its closure as empty interior okay and then uh, a is meager if and only if uh, it is uh, the countable union of more than sets and then finally a is and the bare property, if and only if it is open modulo meager. Okay. So how about our case? Uh, all, the, all the analytic sets have the bare property. How about our case? Because you see wh where we can put lambda. We cannot put, we, we, we need to uh, switch some omega with lambda, right? So nowhere density cannot be changed. So in our case, even in, in the lambda poly space, uh, A is nowhere dense, so it's the same. If it's, if you know, if it's closure as empty material. So at most we can say that uh, uh, we can try to, to say A is lambda meager, Uh, if and only if uh, it is the lambda union of nowhere than sets 
but then the problem is now that the lambda bare space is lambda meter. So the bare property doesn't make any sense because everything is meager. Okay, I mean, okay, everything is the bare property because everything is meager, but it doesn't really say anything. Uh, well, I can prove it to you. So, um, so lambda to do mega is uh, lambda mega proof. Well, we're going to prove that. Um, so you know the so pick a mega pick the closure the uh, how do you say the mm, complement is open dense. So actually, we're going to prove that um, the intersection there are omega one you must move your paper i have to move my paper let me we have some something i don't what, what i do in my classes in the analysis course i move up the the objective so that i can uh, I, mm. they don't complain so much I should put, well, let, let me use this pen. I don't have to use it now. Okay. Mm. Well, let's see what I did. Okay, there are omega one many, and this is going to fall. There are omega one many dense sets. Uh, with the empty intersection. Should say open dense, I guess. Open dense, yes. So you see, if the complement of these sets is going to be uh, omega one many meager sets whose union is uh, omega many meager nowhere dense sets whose union is not to omega. I'm going just to tell you which what, what are these. Mm. Okay, these are uh, the ones. So actually, uh, we don't need to go up until lambda. We just need omega one. Okay, actually, this is uh, this is an idea of Luca. I'm going to. Uh, this is not my idea. I had a different idea. This is better. Okay, so you see, if if something is inter in the intersection, it means that uh, for a, for every element in omega one. The, one of the coordinates is omega one, but that, this would give a, a bijection between omega and omega one, and this is impossible. So the um, complement of this, uh, of these are clearly open dense because yes. So the complement of these are uh, omega one many mega sets whose union is lambda to omega. So the concept of bare property doesn't make any sense for now. Uh, but what is really what really angers me is that in the regular case it works. So nothing works in the regular case, but this works. Why? What? What, what is the? Uh, let me do this. What is? What is going on here? There are many different interpretations of this. I'm going to use this one. So if we have a forcing, the forcing. So in chain, so where where in that proof are you using that lambda is not regular? Oh, because you are using know, the space la it, lambda to be omega rather than kappa. Yes, to kappa. exactly. Okay. Yes, yeah, this is true for every kappa to the omega, but uh, they have kappa to the kappa. And so let's take a forcing. Okay, well, we can uh, induce a topology on the space of um, minimal filters. No, maximal. What is a minimal? There is no minimal. Maximal filters.
and um, the sets, the basic open sets, are uh, this. Okay, so if you have a forcing, you have a, um, a topology on the set of minimal maximal filters of the forcing. Okay, well, uh, what happens is that this gives you um, correspondence between uh, open den sets uh, in this topology and open den sets in the forcing. Uh, you know, are two completely different, uh, um, two completely different notions, but they're correspondent with, uh, with this topology. So what happens is that if P is a kappa distributive, then this forcing with the topology is not Papa Miga. Because it's, it's about the intersection of open dense sets. So if we can intersect a Kappa many open dense sets in P, then you, with no empty intersection, then you have the same for the topology of the maximal filters and vice versa. Okay. And so, what happens to the regular case is that uh, consider um, uh, the, how do you call it, the co-enforcing that adds one element to kappa. Okay. So, what is FP? Well, it's a set of maximal filters, but you see, um, uh, it's actually well equivalent homeomorphic. It's actually homeomorphic to kappa to the kappa because uh, the maximal filters induce, uh, you know, they are generic. Think of the, the generics, for example, they are maximal filters. From a generic, you can build a, a, a subset of kappa. Okay. So maximal filters are element of kappa to the kappa. And uh, you see, conditions just tells you, okay, this, no, two to the kappa, sorry. Conditions just tells you, okay, in this uh, one condition of the forcing tells you, in these coordinates, uh, uh, our generic is going to be zero or one. And this is the same as the bounded topology. So actually the uh, bounded topology on 2D kappa is exactly the topology, the forcing topology from the co-enforcing on kappa, the, the one that adds just one. And this is kappa distributive, and so it's not kappa mega. So one way to settle this for um, the singular case is to find, uh, well, so the, the best would be to find um, forcing that is kappa, that is lambda distributive, it does not, it does not exist, but we can do something. Mm -hmm. So our forcing is going to be the pre pre forcing. Pre pre forcing. So the definition. So we start with the um, kappa measurable. And you are normal measure on kappa. Okay. So the conditions of this forcing, let me call it PU, the conditions are uh, like this. So a, a, a couple, so uh, S is uh, um, uh, a finite sequence of elements in kappa, A is in U, and most of the time, even if it's not really necessary, we want the maximum of S to be less than the minimum of A. So if I need to take a picture, I would think, so we have an ascending sequence, a finite, and then a set that is in U, 
and how to so what is the order so if we want to extend this we need uh, t must extend uh, s uh, b must uh, shrink a and then all the new elements in t must be in a um, let's say uh, i never know how to uh, well, t o n uh, is in a with n bigger than the length so the new uh, so if we want to extend this we we choose some finite elements in the set and we shrink the set And there is an accessory order here with the, with the star. This is stricter. For this, we need, we, we say we put the asterisk here when they are, um, when we don't enlarge the initial sequence. So we just shrink the measure one set without extend okay so what what are the consequences of this forcing this is a singularizing forcing so kappa is coffinite omega in the generic extension and no no cardinal is collapsed Okay, so uh, what are the nice uh, properties of this forcing? One is the pre condition or pre property. So the pre conditions say that says that if you have um, um, an element of the forcing and uh, a sentence, no, 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 a statement, uh, phi then uh, uh, there exists a cube that just uh, restricting the measure one set without uh, so this is called the stem so without extending the stem q can decide phi so either uh, forces phi or forces not phi And the corollary of this is that uh, no cardinal are collapsed. And so, for example, I'm going to show you yeah, just a little bit. Mm, maybe no, maybe, maybe it's late. So no added uh, bounded subset of kappa. Okay, uh, this doesn't say anything about the dense set. So, so there is the strong precondition. It is stronger. This says so. Let let's take it. So P in P in the uh, open dense. Okay. Then uh, this this is okay. I hope I will remember. Uh, this is a little bit complex. So if we have an open and set, then we can um, extend P without changing the stem, so that every time so that, and the reason in so that every time I extend Q. at least uh, uh, n, n times okay then uh, r is in d so well, what i'm trying to do here if we have any open end set it's impossible that i can meet them just by shrinking the measurement set for example think of the dense set the stem is uh, one million as one million elements okay 
So you, you need it to enlarge uh, this, this, any condition need to enlarge it at least 1 million times to, to reach this dense set. But we can um, manage to have so that any, all the extensions are going to be in the dense set. Okay. So for example, this says that um, uh, PU is uh, less than kappa distributive because uh, you know the the force the the measure is less than kappa complete. So if you have less than kappa many open dense sets, and you you can uh, more and more uh, intersect them. So you just uh, shrink once for the first dense set, shrink twice for the second, three for the third, etc. For less than couple many times you can do this. You're going to the intersection is going to be in the measure, and so this is going to be um, condition. Okay, but this is, the, we, we don't care about this because there are no maximal filters for this. If you stay in V, there are no maximal filters for this forcing, so we don't care about this. Uh, we're going to care after that, but uh, and another interesting color, corollary is the geometric condition. So the geometric condition says that, so now suppose we are outside V and we have um, an omega sequence in kappa. No, let me just, uh, X uh, cofinal sequence in kappa, then, we have that uh, uh, X uh, is generic, is PU generic. If and only if for all A U, eventually it's inside every um, measure one set. X is the N for every M bigger than N, X of M is in A. Okay, so these are the three main uh, properties of pre forcing and these are the properties we're going to use to solve all of our problems. So, but we, we see that we would like, so we want to use strong precondition, but this is not useful. Uh, it's going to be useful for another, for the diagonal pre forcing So what is the diagonal pre forcing? So the, the start is we take uh, kappa n, so we take omega many measurable cardinals, with the normal measures on it, okay. And then what do we do? We do uh, what are so I'm putting a, a, an arrow to say. So these are the the conditions. Mm. You know it's 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 hard to write it down. Let me just do a picture. So we have kappa zero, kappa one. Uh, kappa 2, kappa 3, etc. So we choose, uh, so the initial um, segment is going to be one, is going to be a finite sequence. Well, I'm going to write something like this. So a finite sequence of elements, one in kappa 0, one in kappa 1, one in kappa 2, etc. And the rest are going to be a measure one. Let me just write AI, I bigger than N, are going to be measure one sets. 
and extension is what you expect so you can extend for, for a while and then shrink all the rest okay so you see uh, now so what are the generics generics are elements of this set what is this set this is c lambda right mm -hmm. so maximal filters actually are elements of c lambda okay so now we are talking we have a well let's let's think about so so we have a, a space the space of maximal field so without the topology the the set of maximal filters has a correspondence with the set of uh, of our lambda bare space so we just need the right topology now to for to use this but so let me let me say so we don't we don't have um Kappa distribu distributivity, but what we have, we have uh, this, that if we have um, lambda many open dense sets, okay, then there is a maximal filter that meets all of them. So this is not really distributivity because distributivity would mean that the intersection is an open dense set, but we don't have this, but we have one element. This is enough in, in going into the topology, the forcing topology, this is enough to have that uh, the space is not a lambda mega. Mm, I can show you... Mm. Made a drawing. No, okay. I can give you uh, an idea of the proof. When you have time, I can give you an idea of the proof. So you start with the, so we want to intersect uh, kind of right, intersect all these steps. So we start with everything. I'm going to write it like this. This is every, everything. This is like, um, the, the product of the kappa n completely. Okay, then for each point here, we consider this condition. So here we consider the condition that starts with zero and then the rest is everything. One and then the rest is everything, two and then the rest is everything, okay. So how many of these we have? Kappa zero main, right? And then uh, we restrict each one of them so that we can meet the first dense set. Okay. So we're using here the strong precondition. Strong precondition say we can restrict so that all the sequences are in the dense set. So in the first one, then and I don't, I don't, I just have two colors. Clinton had the three. I just have two. Oh, and now I want a third one. Okay, I'm going to use red again. So we can take. Uh, so this was the word. Now all of this intersect uh, the the zero. Then let's intersect the one. Okay. Again, we're intersecting things of measure one, so intersection of two is two. So actually, in the end, we intersect uh, until d kappa zero. So we intersect the first kappa zero many. And we and we all intersect them line by line. You see, we're intersecting kappa zero many times kappa kappa zero times kappa zero many. But 
This uh, uh, ultra filter is kappa one complete. This one is kappa two complete. This one is kappa three complete. So the intersection is still a measure. So in the end, after all this intersection, we're going to have this, and this is going to be a condition in the forcing. And this was for the first kappa zero many, but then choose, take all the pairs and do the same. And then you will have intersected all the first kappa one many, and then you go on and you intersect all the first, all the, all the lambda many. Okay, so this is the proof. So this is actually just a proof that uh, the intersection of uh, densets meet every maximal field. There is always a maximal field that meets all the lambda many open densets, but with the right topology, this is going to give us uh, the bad, not the bad property, the, the fact that an intersection, the intersection of uh, lambda many open dense sets is not empty. Okay. A corollary, another corollary of this is that take a M, a model of set theory, okay, well, minus, well, star, I don't know if you, if you don't want it or, or if you don't want inaccessible cardinals, okay? Uh, let's say that three lambda is containing M and say that um, uh, two to the, well, let me, let me just write away. The dense sets of, so take uh, the, suppose that inside M there is uh, um, Quickly forcing, but outside this is uh, parameter lambda, then there is a generic well, PU generic in V. So this is a way to build the generics in V. Because we have a lambda many dense sets, so you can meet one, and this is going to be a generic for uh, for M. Okay, so this was the this was the introduction. I'm almost okay. Okay, I'm going to skip something, but I, I'm almost uh, good. I don't know. Well, let, let's continue. Let's not make a. So I was thinking whether to make a stop here. Let's not make a stop here. Because now we are, we just have everything we can do. So category for the lambda bear space. Okay. So now we just define the top path. A topology, let's say an accessory topology, that it's it's the forcing topology with the diagonal quickly forcing. So I called it the Ellen Tuck Prickly topology. Why? Because the Ellen Tuck topology is the forcing topology from the Matthias forcing. And it goes prickly is prickly. So I called it like this, but you're welcome to find a better name on on a bare space so actually i can do this just on c lambda right because uh, the elements uh, the maximal filters are element of c lambda they're not elements of lambda to me i guess you can then move in some way homeomorphically also to the lambda to the omega but this works just fine on c uh, lambda but they are all homomorphic so right who cares so then the, the, the topology is the forcing topology on uh, for uh, the diagonal prickly force. Okay. So, I mean, visually, How, how are the open sets? We fix the, the first um, finite coordinate, and then we take all the sequences, not that are inside some 
measure one set. So you see that this is um, a refinement of the usual topology. Because uh, open sets for the product topology are also open sets for the Ellington Kripke topology, but of course it's not the opposite. Actually, uh, most of the times, uh, um, let's call uh, um, NP. Okay, P is an element of the Kripke forcing. And P, so the basic open sets uh, are nowhere dense in the product topology. So we have these these things that are like it seems like in size they are almost like open sets, but they're nowhere dense. There, there's like a, a web. I don't know. So it's like you have. Uh, your uh, nice ball that it's uh, uh, an open set in the product topology and then you have these these things that are nowhere dense so you cannot really you, you cannot find uh, you, you cannot really find an open inside them but they kind of cover a lot and the Kappa and intersection of these ones are still one of these ones. So, oh, they're weird, but they work. Um, so, but, uh, Vincenzo, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm missing something. You are really changing the topology. Just the C to the lambda is just the same base. Yeah, but take, also, say, take in consideration both topologies. So this is kind of an accessory topology. So when I think about things, I think at, at both topologies at the same time. So these topology are nowhere so NP are nowhere dense in the in the product topology. Okay. So I'm not really yeah, changing the topology. Uh, they're closed. Well if a sequence and if a sequence is event I yes. mean the convergence yes. is pointwise convergence on the coordinate. Yes, yes. Yes, it's not closed. So, okay. So, yeah, I'm thinking at both at the same time. So, the corollary, uh, so the, our, our um, intersection thing, I don't, I don't know where it is anymore. Here, yes. Okay, so now our intersection thing says to us that it makes sense to talk about, in this topology, it makes sense to talk about meager states, lambda meager states. Because uh, the inter lambda intersection of, of open dense sets is not empty. And therefore, it's, it never, so the whole space is not the union of lambda many. Uh, nowhere dense sets. But this in this ln tac topology? In this, in the ln tac topology, yes. Yes. This is in the Atlanta Cricket topology. Okay, so what was, uh, okay, so in the, well, remark in the AP topology, C lambda is not lambda meager. And actually, we we can see what the strong precondition means. So we can like uh, um, translate it topologically. This means that if you have a, um, a set, so a, um, a basic open set, and you have a dense set, you can restrict the, the open dense set without a change in its size, so that it's completely inside the dense set. This is what this is written. So uh, I write it. So the strong precondition means that for every P, for every D open dense, 
uh, there exists a queue less. So this is a, like a, a mixture of those. So if we have a dense set, okay, a dense set of course is going to meet uh, the basic open set, but you can shrink it without changing its size so that it's all inside. This is this cannot be possible for the usual topology. For usual topology, we need to shrink it really, like maybe in a ball that it's um, smaller to to get really inside the dense set. But here we do we, we do not need it. And uh, this is this is the difference between the two topologies. Okay, so I'm still. Mm. So we can we can. So we can define the bare property now. I still have no idea exactly what is the right notion. I'm going to give you two notions and then I will see. So the bare property, well, the bare property would be A is in, let's say, AP open dense modulo in AP lambda meager. So this is like the bare pro lambda bare property inside with all the lambda uh, with the anti topology. But actually, the more I'm thinking about why, it, why, why the answer? Is no, why the answer? No, 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 no. Because uh, my my pen is writing without me thinking about it. Uh, so I, I I call it lambda strong pre lambda strong pre property, but I don't know if it's really stronger. Okay. A is an open now in the an open. Okay. I, I wrote so many times open dense that my pen is just modular and AP lambda meter. So the more I think about it, the more I think in this the second one is the right notion. Because the first one has too many things. Uh, there are too many opens. Uh, and our uh, our aim, right, is, is like the product topology. So I think this is the right notion. But uh, I, I don't know anything else. Like this is, uh, so the conjecture is that uh, all lambda analytic, I, I think I proved it, but I don't want to announce it. So all the lambda analytic sets, I think, Analytic sets. Okay. So now it's kind of conjecture. Uh, the lambda strong bare property. Actually, I can prove it. It has the long, the, the strong bare property, but I cannot prove it directly that it has the bare property. Because they are analytic for the product topology, not for the P topology. So, I mean, of course, the second one implies the, 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 the first. So if you prove the second, you prove the, the first. But I cannot prove directly the, the first. It's, it's easier to prove the second in many, many cases. Can mm -hmm. you prove that the two are equivalent, that BP, lambda BP is equal to lambda? No. Why? Well, I, no. I, I, I don't know. I don't think so. And what but if you know. if you consider the analytic with respect to the, to the EP? topology yeah i don't know because you know ep you know it's not completely metrizable it's not a nice topology uh, so i wouldn't know how to define it even like the continuous image of what well you can say the continuous image of uh, a c lambda with again with why the, it topology. is not completely metrizable any point as a as a converging uh... no 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 well now i don't remember um why it's not uh, it's, it's easy you have too many mm. no it, it's it... you think it is no. no no i don't know i mean I... so when but, i thought uh... about it i said no it's not possible it's completely metrizable. now i don't remember what i was thinking one year ago when i thought about this Wait, isn't it isn't it the the density the problem, Vincenzo? Oh yeah, yeah. It's not cross yeah. countable, I guess. Yeah. Yes, it's not cross yeah. countable. 
I mean, you, you can you you can sort of like find a lot of uh, like really a lot of disjoint uh, pairwise disjoint open sets. Yes, so you're, you're, you're spe- no, it's not only the density. I think it's not not even first countable, so it cannot be metrizable. Because uh-huh. the point, every point doesn't have a countable basis in this topology. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if it is not first countable, it's also not metrizable. And the density might be very large, larger than lambda. Mm, it's very large the density. Okay, so that doesn't have anything to do with lambda poly spaces, basically. Yes. But yes. Uh, in the case, I mean, in the case of um, standard uh, polish spaces, when you go to the L intact topology, then the the no, no, the trick is always to play with both topologies. I mean, also in the, I mean, the regularity properties are, are not lost in the... In the... No, but, but when you play with this LNTAC topology, basically you are always playing with two topologies. One is the standard given by the metric, which must be uh, coarser than the one given by LNTAC. It's coarser than the, the, the LNTAC topology. And you play with both to get regularity properties um, with respect to the original topology, but using in the proof the other topology, basically. I see. Okay, so you are doing also with the, the same. Yeah, I mean, it happens often. There is also the gandhi topology. There are other other situations where you play with the second topology, which is not metrizable, is not doesn't have the right properties, but it is used in the proof to get statement about the original topology. And this is another instance of this in the generalized setting, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a I have a question. Uh, okay. Also, so in the in the like Luca was saying in the in the classical uh, case, this uh, this Ellentuck topology is sort of like the answer is sort of like the answer to the question like how can we characterize all the all the sets that have a form of Ramsey property? Mm. Sort of like it comes from the Galvin Prickery theorem, right? We know that Borel sets have it, but like. With more sets have it than just the Borel sets, and like the answer is like, oh yeah, all the sets having the bare property for the Allen topology are, are Ramsey in this sense. Mm-hmm. Is there? Can we can we find uh, like a, I don't know a similar thing in in your situation? Or... Yeah, I tried to look at it. Uh, the problem is that you know if you now don't rem- I don't remember. Okay, I'm not a descriptive set theorist, but if I remember correctly. Like the Ramsey property in the end was very similar to what we are doing. Like uh, it seemed like there was no more information in looking at this. Uh, but then it's 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 still open. Yeah, I I I, I forgot to say at the beginning. This is all work in progress. It is still in the Thanks. So well, I guess this is a nice moment. Should we break a... now? Mm-hmm. So now it's uh, 5.38, according to my clock. Uh, shall we reconvene at uh, 45, maybe? Or do you want a little bit more time, Vincenzo, to take a brief? No, no, 45 is fine. 45. So in seven minutes, we, we start the second uh, part of a, of a talk with Vincenzo. Okay. And whenever you're ready, Vincenzo, you can go. I am ready. Okay. So... Mm. Yeah, I have to left out something of what I wanted to say. I have to to decide what I think. So I don't want really to go into the details, but I wanted to show you a problem with this approach. Well, the first problem is that uh, is not uh, so the element of topology depends on a, on a sequence of measures, right? And uh, we still do not know whether if we change the the sequence of measure, we change topology. Like it seems really, it is a difficult, a difficult problem. And the second problem is in the in the the problem with the product topology. So what is the problem with the product? Um, so bare category is used a lot in. Uh, results about uh, equivalence relations, like reducibility of equivalence relations, uh, for example, silver dichotomy, etc. So I said, well, so let's, let's, let's do this for equivalence relations. So let's take, uh, for example, C lambda times C lambda. 
with the product to product of the AP topologies, right? And this is going to be great. It wasn't. Why? Because this is a um, union of uh, C many nowhere than sets. So sets. So not omega one, but C. So it's still a few. Uh, I just wanted to show you what are these. So again, we do the complement. So I'm just going to show you we have uh, C many open dense sets whose intersection is empty. And this is it. So we take. Um, This one. So it's kind of we take a, um, an omega sequence of zero and ones as a reference, and we, we check uh, at least. Uh, so you, you can see this. You know, where, whenever we have, we have a reference, we can say whether two sequences are the same or not. And uh, a, a couple is in DA if uh, it agrees uh, with uh, with the sequence. So there is at least uh, one uh, one coordinate whether either A says they should be the same, they're the same, or A says they should be di different and they're different. Okay. So you see, it's something, uh, what happens is that every, uh, every couple has an A, it is not in some DA. Um, let me let me do this. So suppose uh, the intersection of the A is not is is so let's take x y in it. Okay, but now you define A on N, uh, you know, the opposite one, if X of N is equal to F Y of N, and zero if X of N is different than Y of N. And you see that X, Y cannot be in this A. So you can, given a, a pair of things in, in C lambda, you can always find an A such that they are not in the A. Okay, uh, so what do we do? So here is the problem that for the product of the diagonal pre-reforcing uh, does not satisfy the strong precondition. So that this is why. So we just need to find a forcing that generates whose maximal filters are uh, couples of uh, elements of C lambda and that satisfies the strong precondition. Now, this is a kind of uh, elaborate and now I don't have time to, to go into all the details, but just know that there exists, like you can find, uh, can find like a, a P2, then actually such that, um, pretty much is, is uh, the product of the so the problem is that these two adds a coin a coin real. So if you add a coin real, you see you do not you do not have this corollary. Uh, you cannot have it's here, right? No, it's not here. Okay. Well, you you cannot uh, find the generics in V if you have a coin real. And so, but you can take it away. But the problem is that the, the maximal filters are not going to be in the product. Uh, no, well, let's call it this. But 
they are going to be is going in this space. So everything is more complicated. You don't have really the products of the two spaces. You have this kind of like diagonal product. It's it's more involved. But we can have uh, in the end we're going to have the Kuratowski Ulam theorem. Uh, in our context. And then we're going to have also the Misiaski. If you don't know what they are, uh, you don't care. If you know what they are, you care about uh, Misiaski, about this result. If you move up your uh, paper. Yes. Now I'm going to change completely subject. Okay. And to be continued. I'm still working on it. Also, I need uh, Lucas' help uh, to to find the things. So let, let's to be continued. Uh, I zero. Let's talk about I zero. Okay, now I'm not going to, to give you all the history of A0, if I, uh, this would be just another talk. I'm just going to say to you what it is. So this is it. Now I'm going to tell you all about all the parts of it. So I'm using this uh, symbol to say elementary embedding. So we have Elementary embedding, if and only if. So it, it's uh, well, you, you should you should know what it is, right? Um, it it preserves the, the the structure, the theory. Okay, and then L V lambda plus one is the least ZF model that contains. Uh, v lambda plus one, and this is the least ordinal such that uh, j of kappa is bigger than kappa. Okay, so we are going to we have um, an elementary embedding between I mean inside the same model of uh, ZF, not ZFC, and then this contains all v lambda plus one. This is a very large cardinal, like the, the very, 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 very large. In fact, you, you see, well, at least kappa must be uh, measurable because it's the critical point of an elementary embedding, but it's actually n huge for every n. Okay, so it's it's uh, it's it's lambda super compact. Uh, well, it, it, it's large. Okay, so now what's the, well, why, why am I bringing this, right? Because I would improved in, in, in the past that, well, first of all, here we have V lambda plus one. So this should remember, it should remind you of something. But this is a mess, I don't, I don't find anything. This should remind you of one of the, this is a lambda polish space. Oh, I, I still have to tell you why. But first, so first, let me tell you that uh, would improve that a zero implies um, that um, L of R is a model of the axiom of determinacy. And then, so if uh, if this is true, so uh, we have that. Uh, think of this sequence kappa. No, let kappa zero be the critical point of J. And take a kappa j of kappa zero, j of kappa one, no j of c, yeah, ah, j of j of j of kappa zero. I'm I'm just too used about everything. J of j of j of kappa zero, etc. This is a critical sequence, and it must be by Kuhn theorem. It must be that the supremum of all of this is lambda. So you see lambda. Is uh, is a cofinite omega. 
and its limit of inaccessible cardinals. I mean, its limit of huge cardinals is its limit of inaccessible cardinals. So this is a lambda poly space. So V lambda plus one is a lambda poly space. Okay. And you, actually, if you if you go around, if you see the literature, you're going to see that this comes uh, the good in uh, at a certain point started to, to work with this. Uh, mm, R in the collapse of kappa with kappa supercompact. Well, anyway. We're starting to see some similarities, and this is our aesthetics. This is what we want. We want similarities. Now we have a lambda poly space that is sort of, you know, V lambda plus V lambda plus one is a lambda poly space. L V lambda plus one, so it's sort of kind of like L of R, and there is a G in the middle, the action of determinacy. Now, so we have more similarities. <laughs> Here they are or similarities. Okay. So for example, under the axiom determinacy, omega one is measurable. Well, in L in L V lambda plus one under a zero lambda plus is measurable. So these are additional similarities. So if we do not have both we have the similarities we've seen before, so we have these similarities, but if we add on one hand, the determinacy, and on the other hand, is zero. We have these similarities. We have the coding lemma, the coding lemma. All the subsets of R have the perfect set property under AD, and all the subsets of V lambda plus one have the lambda perfect set property under A zero. Theta is inaccessible limit of measurable cardinals, uh, the same in under A zero, and we have um, a version of a weak homogeneously Suslin set on under ID and we have same thing under a zero of representability. Yeah, I'm not going to the details, huh? but uh, the point is that using, so what well, I'm going to tell you more a bit. So what it means with homogeneity solution, not, this is a difficult, like uh, an involved uh, definition, but this just means that there is a structure of like some kind of tree of uh, measures such that if you read this structure, you can uh, construct a weak homogeneously Suslin set. And, and under a zero, we have the same. So from now on, suppose. Wait, uh, Vincent. Yes. I have a question. Do, is there a, because in in the in the world of in the in the world of uh, reals, you have AD, but you also have like a projective determinacy, and there's there's a sort of like a mm. fine level by level approach. Is there anything similar uh, in the case of L V lambda plus one? No, no, not that I know. Maybe we can we can try it uh, now that we have uh, this new language. Maybe we can try it. But actually, the, the point that I, I thought about it this Christmas, like determinacy, it seems it's not working here under A0. Like, you just take determinacy, the same determinacy, mm -hmm. uh, already at pi 1, 1. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if lambda, pi, lambda analytic sets have, are determined, even under A0. Okay. Uh, so it seems that something is not working, but still work in progress. Okay, thanks. Okay, so from now on, we're going to suppose that all sets are representable. So this actually, I'm going to say that because I'm pretty sure that Scott Kramer proved it. But he still haven't published it. And I still haven't read it, so but you should have proved it. So you, that under a zero all sets are representable. So what I mean with representable, there is this structure where you read the structure and you can find your. So now J is iterable. So let um, 
j0 omega be the iterate, the omega iterate. So it's going to All be sets some... are representable in uh, in L of V in LV in lambda, lambda, lambda plus one. Yes. Okay. So we can iterate. So when we iterate, what what happens? Is that uh, kappa zero goes to lambda. So in M omega, lambda is like a kappa zero. It's a huge and huge uh, super a little bit of super compactness, measurable and accessible. So it's not anymore of kappa night omega. It's very regular, right? But the the catch is that so we don't have the critical sequence here, right? But the catch is that this sequence is uh, um, generic for a prickly forcing. Okay. And so if we force with it, so if we force uh, using with it, we can reconstruct a lot. So for example, we can reconstruct uh, uh, the theory of the subsets of our lambda polyspace. So this gives us a generic absoluteness result. So this gives us a generic absoluteness result. Uh, mm. Now I'm going to read it because it's too involved. So we have I zero. And let's call it kappa zero. Then we have um, J actually, okay. Hmm. Actually, uh, what I can say is that this is true for prickly forcing, but we can have any forcing that singularize lambda, and so and such that we have the generic in V. But this just needs a strong prickly condition, right? This is what we said before. So let P be a forcing uh, that singularize lambda with a strong condition then for every alpha less than theta that I mean if you know what the state is okay otherwise as a matter or G uh, G P generic in V okay so well I wanted to, to write it to you with, with all the details but pretty much what, what does this mean is that if you can force something we on kappa zero with a forcing that has the strong precondition and will singularize kappa zero, this is going to be true in already true in uh, for v lambda plus one. So if you can force something about the subset, the definable subset of v lambda plus, so if you can force something about the lambda poly space for kappa zero, then this means it was already true for uh, lambda. So this is one of these results, kind of like uh, uh, the ones that Matteo showed us or of Schindler. If, if you can force something, this is true. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's not my result, it's a wooden result, of course. Uh, unfortunately, I've never seen anybody using this uh, uh, with, with, with 
Well, maybe there is one paper by Xi, but that's it. But I think it's very strong because this means that under A0, you know, it's really about the the descriptive set theory of uh, the lambda bar space. The descriptive set theory of the lambda space, whatever, when you can force it, it's true. Well, that's it. So, and, and again, here is the strong precondition again. Uh, as you see, this is a completely different. But you vaccine. can force just with the re, with this very specific forcing. Yes, in fact, this is why there is. It's really difficult, right, to find something that makes uh, uh, that is useful. But uh, but it's not that specific. It, it should have just a strong precondition. There are many forcings that have a strong precondition. I think um, I don't know. We invited Alejandro Poveda that he, he made his thesis about that. So maybe we'll talk about all the uh, all such forcings with a strong precondition. Okay. So now, but you, you so you can use this in this direction. So this sort of saturation of if you can force it is true. But there is also the other direction that is. If something is true, then you can force it on the critical point of I zero, and so this is what I used. Uh, well, we used. I used with all my co-authors. <laughs> really much. I used this this trick to so you you know you can have uh, I I one plus uh, the the failure of the singular cardinal hypothesis or bad scales, good scales, or you can have that a model where all the sets have the lambda perfect property without a zero. Okay, because you you just uh, you just push it down. Of course, this means that a zero doesn't really have any direct um, the consistency wise. Maybe, but it doesn't have any. It's difficult to find direct. Uh, um, consequences on the descriptive set theory by a zero because everything you can push it down in, in, a, in a model without a zero. Okay, so uh, about this, uh, all subsets have the pre the professor property. So we've seen that. So, like. So under A0, so we have a under A0, we have a model of uh, we, we have a, the lambda bare space with all these subsets with the lambda perfect set property. So the question is, can we have it with less than A0? Because again, similarities, right? It's true that AD implies uh, all PSP, and so A0 implies all. Lambda PSP, okay, but uh, you don't need the the full the full force of AD. You just need much less, right? So we proved you just need an inaccessible. Okay, so can we push down a zero? I think so. Well, but but you are moving from uh, implication to consistency. Yes, consistency, go... consistency. Yes, yes. Well, it's not is the FC plus inaccessible uh, consistency. So consistency of what will imply consistency of lambda PSP. Uh, okay, I don't have much time. Uh, what I proved, I think, oh, here it is. Oh, why, why I wrote here? Okay. And, and this is going to be, this is, this is. Okay, so, mm. so let me tell you a little bit about uh, the Soloway proof. It works while collapsing uh, an inaccessible cardinal. So you, you start with the cup inaccessible. Start with cup inaccessible, and then you collapse it to omega. And no, 
you collapse everything below it to omega so that uh, kappa becomes omega one. And then what happens is that if A is in odd of R, then A, A has the A P is B. So if A is definable using only ordinals and reals, then A has the perfect property. So in the end, your model is going to be a hod of R inside V of G with G the generic for the collapse. Okay. And the proof, nah, yeah, I don't have much time. I think, I think I'm not going to tell you much anything. Well, I can tell you this. So how how it how it works? So the the nice things about there are two things. Well, there are many things we're using. One nice thing about the collapse is that you can. Um, if you have a condition in the collapse, if you cut here in alpha, you're going you are going to have two conditions. One in the collapse of alpha and the other in collapse from alpha to kappa. So it's very factorizable. Okay. So the point is that if and the second one is that R of uh, in the collapse is the union less the kappa of r so you're not adding you're not adding anything at the end everything you all the reals you added you added you could have added already while collapsing something below cup and so if something is um, order definable using reals so just take an alpha that contains all the reals such that the alpha step contains all the reals this is going to be a new grad model and then you use home uh, no, i don't have time you use uh, homogeneity to find uh, a perfect set of different elements that are all going to be inside a so what i think i proved is this uh, so, uh, so I wanted to, to well, I can say this, I wanted to build a Solovay-like model and then I realized it was already built by someone else, by George Kafkoulis. He is a, a student of Houdin, of course. And he just published, he, 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 I think he's kind of obscure because he just published two papers in his life, one in 1994 and the other in 2004. In 2014, I was very upset that disappointed that no, no paper. And they're also not, not very, they were not very cited. These are three citations. And by the way, two just in the last year. And this one had, six citations okay but four by me okay so i don't know. so I, I feel like i'm kind of still in following his footsteps in a certain sense uh, and, and i found uh, so i found a construction of his that works but he didn't prove that uh, the, we had the perfect property in that construction so this is was something i i had to do so i'm going to tell you what is the construction so let's take a um, kappa theta super compact. Okay, with theta bigger than kappa, inaccessible. So again, we have something and inaccessible above, and we're going to collapse theta with what? With a super compact pre reinforcing. Okay, and uh, so let's uh, let's say G generic for P. Okay, 
Now, also the super compact prickly force thing we can. So maybe maybe I should say what it is the the super compact prickly force thing before finishing. So uh, it's kind of the same. So but instead of having a measure, so let's we'll be, we start with a measure on p kappa theta. Okay, so we have a measure on the sequ sequences in theta with well on the subset of theta with cardinality less than kappa. Okay, and again we 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 just decide we we do the same we decide. Uh, um, all the conditions are as a finite sequence, and then I measure one set of all the possible extensions. The only difference is that we need to find some kind of order in the sequences because, uh, um, you know, ordinals are ordered. If we have a sequence, so let's take P and Q in P kappa theta, then P is less, is contained, strongly contained in Q. If so, the cardinality of um, no, I don't want to write if the cardinality of so what is the biggest one? The cardinality of uh, few is less than p intersected cardinality of kappa. Okay, so. So, so well, so this is the theta. Okay, this is kappa. So the cardinality of the second one. So the the first one must be of cardinality less than the intersection of the first one. So the the second one must be really large. And so as we take a sequence of uh, a final sequence of sequences that uh, satisfy this. Okay, and but then we can cut. Isn't the other way around, P and Q? Uh, Isn't P? Yes, 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 kappa, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes. Usually Q, yes, okay. So, so the way I, I picture this, even if it's not really, so I'm thinking of, uh, you know, uh, Finite many sequences that don't really go up until theta because they have cardinality kappa, that and it's inaccessible, but they are larger and larger. And then uh, measure one set where we're going to to choose the next one. But then we can cut to alpha, and if we cut to alpha, what is below is a is a an element of, you know, U on alpha is a measure for P kappa alpha. Okay. And so we can have, uh, we can define the super compact prickly forcing. So actually we, we can, if we cut, we're going to have another forcing, like we can project to the forcing below. Okay, and so we can define, we can also cut uh, all the conditions, we can cut the generic, etc. So, so now let's define H of G as, so we're going just to take, the problem is that we, after, after this forcing, after P, uh, so, for all alpha between kappa and theta included, the cofinality of alpha is equal to gamma. So also theta is collapsed. We don't want to collapse theta because we want to do something similar. So we just take a symmetric model uh, all the x inside a p. Well, I'm going to just, where it is. Mm, okay, sorry.
Ni se escapa. Okay. So we're going to take H of G. So we're going to take just the things that are they are not that are added at some stage. Because uh, contrary to the Levy collapse, here we're going to add something at the end. We don't want that. And Kafkulis proved that L of HG is actually L of P kappa plus one. Here it is. Okay. Okay, well, and then it proved that uh, um, for all A inside L V kappa plus one using the so kappa with kappa V kappa plus one is a kappa polyspace, cofinity of kappa is equal to omega. For every A, either A is cardinality less than kappa or A, A contains a copy of C lambda. So all the sets inside L with kappa plus one have the PSP. Kappa C kappa. PSP. C kappa, no C C kappa. kappa. Ah, C. Yeah. Okay. So you okay, uh, this is being perfect because we've seen the homomorphic. So before proving that they're homomorphic, I would have said, okay, maybe I, this, this is not the right version of kappa PSP. Yeah, I don't have the, the, the time to, I think it's okay here. No, I'm going to tell you the end of the story. So what, what do we learn about all this? So if you're, if you're still awake, what did we learn? So I have uh, three things I learned about with this. First is that so the fourth thing is very useful for uh, descriptive set theory, and we can co-opt some of this into generalized descriptive set theory. For example, every time we have Cohen in the classical way, we can use diagonal, diagonal prickly forcing. And here, this su suggests that wherever we have a Levy collapse, we can substitute it with some super compact prickly forcing. First thing. Second thing, you see, we had the strong tricky condition. Okay, here you don't see it, but I used a lot the strong tricky condition to prove this because I had to find the generics and so on. So is there something in common like uh, with the, the, the elementary tricky topology, this construction and the and the generic absoluteness. I don't know. Maybe there's something deeper behind it. And third, you know, typically larger cardinals, you say, well, when we are students, they, they told us, well, larger cardinals just are just like, have characteristics similar of omega, but larger. So, for example, in accessibility, measurability, are all things that are true for omega, but if it's larger, you have large cardinals. Well, maybe we can think not anymore. Well, I mean, we can think of this, of course, but up to a certain, after a certain point, is the omega limit of large cardinals that is similar to omega. This seems to point that that the more, so when we have a, a singular cardinal, the more large cardinals we add as cofinal to it, the more uh, the lambda polyspace has, stru has structure. Also, you know, we've seen lambda limit of large cardinals everywhere, uh, omega limit of large cardinals everywhere, like even determinacy uh, comes from omega limit of wooden cardinals. I zero, if you see about it, is omega limit also. So that's it. Okay. I think I'm finished. Thank you. Uh, applause, applause. <laughs> uh, are there any questions? 
I have one. In the okay. last theorem, um, in the extension, kappa can, I guess, if you start with something, can can be at least uh, well, maybe even strong limit or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it is still because uh, this is not a force in the that's a bounded subset. Okay, okay. So, so if, you, if you start with the right cap, because that you always say contains a copy, and I'm always wondering whether it, it contains a closed copy of C kappa. Mm. But this follows well, automatically because okay. if it is enough closed kappa, then uh, the copy of C kappa is at least analytic, and then inside the analytic you can find a closed copy of C kappa, and that, that works. Okay. So you can okay. improve the conclusion in this way. Hello? Okay. Yes. I, I had a, co a connection problem, so I think I lost the very last part of the talk. Is the talk finished? I mean, I was supposed to cheer, yes, but I was not there at the right moment. Uh, yes. I managed to reconnect now. Okay. Yeah, the talk is finished. So I think we were already. We were. Uh, there were some uh, questions. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but you Luca, have to go by yourself. So I, I'm, go to... I'm going to ask Luca more about this because you know I'm I, I'm writing this, but I don't I don't know. Like I've seen it and I say, okay, that's a copy, but I don't know how to write it correctly. So, like, yeah, we should talk about this. Yes, thank. You. Other questions or comments? Okay. Okay, so let's uh, thank again uh, Vincenzo for his nice talk. And we are meeting again uh, again next week. I think uh, next week we, no no not next week because next week is Easter Friday. So in two weeks actually, and uh, on April 9th, uh, we will have Alessandro Berarducci from Pisa, right? Uh, so we, we meet in two weeks. Uh, happy Easter to everybody, I guess. Uh, even though this uh, year, surely, like last year, we are not doing a lot of traveling or, you know, many things. I mean, we are planning a party in the garden. That's the most we can afford, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> a party with the family. I mean, just with the family. No more. Okay. You're not invited. No, you are not invited, Matteo. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, and I'm... all the others attending the seminar, you are not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not even so Vincenzo is closed. Or, or you guys. make a party, you announce it, and then you don't invite anybody <laughs> of the people you are telling it about. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. I, uh, Luca, can we talk a little, just a minute, uh, you know, with Martina, maybe?